Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching the Get Your Mind Right podcast. I'm Brian Mendenhall, President and CEO of Family First Life Central Division. Guys, please like, comment, subscribe, and follow us on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, or any other place you watch your podcast. Enjoy, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys. Thank you for joining us on the Get Your Mind Right podcast. We got a special guest, Pauline Scanlon. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Phenomenal. I appreciate you joining us. I know you're extremely busy. Today's your dial day. You're supposed to be on the phone right now helping families, right? But you took a couple minutes to help us out. Hey, so I want to kind of talk to you a little bit. This is the Get Your Mind Right podcast, and you're a fairly new agent. How, how long have you been with us? Well, if you want to be technical, I've been here since August. When I think when I met you, I told you I'd been here for only three to four months. The reason why I said that is basically I was kind of diving into it a little bit from mm -hmm. August, November. I wouldn't even have considered myself part time. I would have been more of like a sometimes when I feel like it time. So I. OK, OK. So I, I bring that up because this is called the Get Your Mind Right podcast. And a lot of people don't understand. Understand they go through struggles. They have different mental blocks, things holding them back. I don't know what happened with you. But I know you've come in now and kind of ripped the cover off the ball. Last month, you helped 33 families, which is a big deal, right? Talk, mm -hmm. well, talk to me. Was that your biggest month also? Yes, it was. Okay. What are you doing now that in the very beginning you weren't doing that you're kind of switching because something changed? Are you saying like from the beginning, like what made me go full time? Or are you saying like when I was full time to? So. So even when you started full time, I'm assuming you didn't start where you are now. You tried to figure it out. You were going through stuff, probably had blocks. There's something that you figured out to help 33 families last month. What was it? Um, I think it was a little mixture of some things. Uh, I would say that convention definitely did help. I did go to convention in February and um, I was just on a podcast with Paul too. We were talking about this and um it was basically my structure. I wasn't really protecting my dial days like I should. Um, so I started getting serious about like, don't bother me. Like I lock myself in my car. Like if I'm not at an office, I'm in my car. Like, don't bug me. Don't ask me if I'm hungry. Like I'm busy. I'll come in when I'm ready, you know? Um, and then another thing that I heard about convention over and over and over again was 30 appointments per week. And they talked a lot about being selfless. Like, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about your clients, about the family you're trying to serve. And I've always heard that, but somebody, I can't remember who it was, but they worded it just a little bit different. That really clicked for me. And instead of saying that, they said, work with your heart, not your mind. And that was Ooh. like, oh, oh, that's what you mean. Because I overthink a lot of things. And I was always thinking, what do I say next? What if they ask this? What, you know, what am I going to do? But when they said work with your heart, not your mind, like I'm a visual learner. And I was like, I naturally have a heart to serve and help others. So if I just forget everything, like don't even worry about what to say next, just go in there and, and try and help them because that's who you are. And that changed everything because I wasn't trying to figure out like a script. I wasn't as robotic as I used to be. It was just like, hey, how can I help you? That's and so good. that was a big change for me. That's so good. Knowing that you're that way, talk to me a little bit about when you're sitting with a client, right, and you're helping someone, do you have a problem challenging a family? Because it sounds like you're coming from the heart. So talk to me a little bit about that. Um, I do and I don't. Like, I feel like I challenge them accordingly, but I am still new. So I know that I still have a lot to work on. Like, for example, you just told me yesterday to watch your final expense. And I did. And I was like, yeah, I'm missing out on a lot, you know? <laughs> um, um, I guess you could say I just really try and find their why. I try to dig on that quite a bit. And I let them talk about that for at least five minutes. If they're not willing to talk about it, then I just have to ask more questions. Like the ones we hear all the time, you know, Brian, what is it going to look like if you don't come home tomorrow? What does that look like for your wife and kids? Like, oh, it looks really bad. Okay, so talk to me a little bit more about what bad means. Like, can you, is she going to have to be on the streets? Can she afford the home? Like, what does that look like? So, but I can't, I'm not where you're at yet. <laughs> yeah, no, so, and you are though, because the information's out there 
and you can copy and paste and listen to Paul. You can listen to me. You can sound like and be anybody you want. Because, I mean, you just said it. It comes from the heart, right? So yeah. if, you're in a, if you're in a house knowing, like, first off, have you had a deaf claim yet? I have not. Okay. So I will tell you, once you do have a deaf claim, things are going to get really, really real for you. And you're going to know, like, all right, if I don't say this, they can end up not having coverage and end up passing away with no life insurance, and it's my fault, right? I will say one thing. I, although I have not had a death claim, I did go into a home once where I, I was able to help the wife and not the husband because the husband just kind of kept pushing me off mm -hmm. and saying, you know what, honey, I don't want to be rude. I just had a really, really bad day at work. It's been a long day. I promise I'll do it another day. Just today's not the day. And I said, okay. And literally a week after the wife called me bawling because he had just found out he had prostate cancer. So by the time I came back, like, even though he didn't die, I, that I took that to heart. I feel like it was my fault that I didn't fight harder. And I mean, it completely eliminated a lot of our options, you know? Oh. So it was like, when I go into every home, I stress that when That's they try and so... cancel on me, I'll still show up and they'll be like, did you not get my message? And I'm like, like, for example, just last week, I tried calling her. So it was obvious I did get her voicemail. Normally I just say, no, I did. I'm sorry. I've been so busy. You want my shoes on or off? But that day I actually did try calling her and I said, you know, Jennifer, I did, but I'll be honest with you. I, I still showed up today because the last time somebody told me that he ended up getting cancer. And I take that to heart and I take my job very seriously. The last thing I want is for something to happen to you and have to go through that again. So that's why I'm here. It's normally one or two little small things that change your whole mindset. And it's like a mind shift. So mine was my aunt Tina when she got sick. She actually ended up passing away with no insurance because they fired her from her job, right? But I had already asked her ahead of time about getting insurance. Well, if I push harder, I feel like, again, it was my fault. So I never sat with another client without really pushing the fact that work insurance is not yours. You don't own it, and you need to have your own outside of it. And, I mean, my Aunt Tina's story probably, probably I, at this point, almost millions of people have probably heard it, right? And yeah. have helped the client with some life insurance because of it. So it, it's kind of cool. It shifted my whole mindset. So you started in the beginning talking about protecting your dial time, right? Talk to me about your mindset when going on the phones, because I mean, the phones aren't easy. I think the phones are the biggest part of our business. The most important part of our business is how you make your money. It's where your money's made. Would you agree? Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about your mindset going into the phones, knowing that you're going to have struggles, knowing that you're going to get your teeth kicked in, what, what is, what's your mindset going into a dial day? Um, so one thing that kind of helps me, I, I feel like my, my mom was kind of someone that was always rude to people that were trying to sell her stuff. Mm -hmm. So like, I always put myself in that kind of situation because my mom doesn't hate whoever's coming over. She doesn't know you. She just is not comfortable. So I always kind of laugh when someone hangs up on me. I'm not sitting there like, Oh my God, like another one. It's like, you have, I personally always buy like a little over a hundred, like 120 or more leads per week. So like whenever someone hangs up on me, I don't even give it any attention at all. It's just on to the next. In fact, I'll probably call them right back. You know? Oh, sorry. Hey, Jenna, we got disconnected anyways go right back into it. And I've booked quite a few appointments doing that. It's not really a big deal. Like you got how many other people to call? They always tell you like, there's so many people you have to help. And there's so many people that actually want your help and are waiting. So why give one, you know, why let one ruin the rest of your day? You have so many more to go. Just on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. It's so funny. Cause I always talk about having enough leads so that you have a different kind of swag, right? Like, if you have enough leads, you don't give a crap. You're trying to get through them, and you're like, go ahead and make me mad. I'm just on to the next. It doesn't matter, right? Kind of like having enough appointments, same mindset. But we actually do this live telesales thing, right, where people can actually call in, make phone calls, brand new agents, and watch other 30, 40, 50 people booking appointments and selling, like, one call closes, right? And there was a situation where somebody actually called somebody, hung, got hung up on. 50 people watching this person. They're like, yeah. I'm calling back. Call a person yeah. back and help the person with a policy. 
And then at the end, the person was like, thank you so much. I had like four new agents call me like, hey, can I, can I order those leads? Hey, guess, guess what kind of leads they were? $3, one to three month, I think three month old instant internet leads. I'm like, boom, now they all work. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, talk to me a little bit about, um, you, you never ran a business before, did have, have you? This is new. Okay, knowing that what we do is you're running a business. That's what this is. Had you ever invested in yourself the way that you have to invest in yourself now? And if not, how did you get over the fear of investing in leads? That's a tough one. Um, the way I got over the fear was just kind of, I'll be honest, like coming into this industry, I was always a saver. Like I always put money aside. So I did have a little cushion. Um, and they talk, we talk a lot about just betting on yourself. Like if you know you're going to put in the work, Let's say you spent a thousand dollars for leads. Okay, let's just give the example. That's the average you should be spending per week, um, and you that maybe buys you a hundred, maybe a little bit more, depending on what you're buying. If you're really putting in the work, you really think that you can't sell one out of those hundred and make your at least break even. Like I'm pretty positive I could sell at least five out of the hundred, even if you really suck. Like, come on, you got to have a little bit more faith in yourself than that, you know? And every time I do, it always works out. So why would I stop? Mm. Now I see it. I love it. Hey, your mindset is is very focused. I used to tell people you need to be like a horse with the blinders on. And I feel like you're, you have that going on, which is awesome. Are you helping other people do the same thing? Because once you figure out how to be a top producer, help 20, 30, 40 families a month, you kind of mastered it. And now you should be really teaching other people to do the same. Are you working on building an agency? Yes. Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, so I don't have like a huge group yet, but I have been helping um, a couple and it's, it's challenging, you know, because not everyone always has your kind of mindset. Not everyone wants it as bad as you do. So that's definitely something that I've, had to, you know, adjust to and keep in mind, because over here, they always tell you, you know, like, just meet them where they're at, you know, you can't want it more than they do. And I just try and tell my agents the same thing that, you know, I have in my mind, like, if you go into this with, with your heart instead of your mind, I think you're going to do really, really well. Anytime I, I share the opportunity with anybody, I just tell them, like, if you work really, really hard, and you genuinely care about people, you know, like you're going to do great. And that's one thing that drew me in really quick when I was watching Sean's video, when you, before you take the course, there's two things he said. He was like, if you generally, generally work hard and you're generally a people person, like you like people, you actually care about people, you're going to, you're going to do great. I was like, that's me. That's me. Like, why wouldn't I? So. <laughs> that's so funny. She's like, that's me. I can do this. And I, 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 I believe that. I don't want to say that anybody can do this. I believe that, like you just said, you got to be a people person. You got to be willing to put the people first. And when you're willing to do that, it makes it a lot easier. Like, I love what I do. I don't actually call this work. You know, the phones are work. But when I was going out to sit with clients, that was actually fun. Like, that was a lot of fun. And and it's kind of hard to top it. You know what I mean? Um, if, if you could go back and know, like, when you were a brand new agent, if you could change one thing, what would you change? I would protect my dial day. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said from the beginning, and I would consistently book my 30 appointments and consistently um, invest in leads. Because in the beginning, I was kind of like picking and choosing. Like I'd probably invest once a month or twice a month. And I mean, that obviously showed why I wasn't helping as many people as I am now, now that I'm consistently investing in leads. Um, just what they said, like back to the basics, protect your dial day, you know, door knock in between appointments, um, book your 30 and reinvest every single week. All right. I'm a brand new agent. I'm watching you right now. And I'm like, Hey, I, I'm starting fresh. I just got my license. I'm starting fresh. What would you tell me? What advice would you give me? Buy leads and go to work and reach out for help if you need help. Like, I don't think I've called a single person here that wasn't willing to give me at least five minutes and just give me 
you know, their intake and their perspective on how the, I could improve my activity and how I can help more families, not once. When they say everyone here is, is willing to help, they really are. And I thank you again, Brian. I thank you so much for helping me out. Like I've only known you for a short amount of time. And any of you that have met Brian, you guys know he's a big dude, but I mean, your heart is just something else. Like your energy, I picked up on that right away. You just have this energy of like, I want to help anybody and everybody that I possibly can. And I really respect that about you and I appreciate it. So I was going to say, I appreciate you. And and I was sitting here looking at you and the way you even answered the question where I asked if I was a new agent, what would I do first? And you kept it so simple. You're going to, you're going to do really, really good at this because you don't overcomplicate it. It's very simple. You buy leads. You get on the phone, you protect your dial time, and you go serve people and wash, rinse, repeat, and then teach somebody else to do the same thing. God, oh, so now, now I am a new agent. Now I'm a person, I'm watching this, I'm like, I'm fired up. I want to work with that girl. Or I want to come in and learn more about what she's doing. How do I get a hold of her? How, how do they get a hold of you? Um, you can text me or you can call me. Uh, my direct phone number is 669 233 one three six six or you can find me on facebook pauline scanlon how do they spell it um my my first first name's p-a-u-l-e-n-e not i last Last name's scanlon that's s-c-a-n-l-a-n you're gonna crush it this year i'm excited for you i appreciate you you need me for anything let me know okay thank you appreciate it take care 